Welcome to today's SeafoodNews.com video, sponsored by the Alaska Seafood Marketing Institute. Good morning. It's um, Thursday, May 2nd. Uh, our big news of today is that the Global Aquaculture Alliance has announced uh, that the causes of the shrimp disease, EMS, or early mortality syndrome, have been found. Uh, this is a very significant development for the global shrimp industry. Uh, the GAA and the World Bank have been financing uh, research into uh, the causes of EMS disease uh, since 2012. Uh, this disease uh, causes an early death of shrimp put into ponds within about 30 days of stocking. And most of the shrimp at this, at this age are too small to enter into commerce. Um, the disease started apparently in southern China it's uh, spread to Vietnam, Malaysia, and Thailand, and has been responsible for a, a very significant drop in production uh, in Southeast Asia uh, of, of shrimp over the past year. Uh, Thailand uh, production has been down almost uh, 25 to 30 percent when you look at the U.S. market, a little bit less when you look at other markets. Uh, naturally, this has provoked a chain reaction with uh, buyers who had relied on, on that shrimp going to other markets like India and Ecuador and Indonesia and bidding up uh, the available shrimp supplies. Uh, the whole question of what was the market outlook for this year has really been turning on how quickly and how successfully this disease will be treated. Uh, the fact that uh, the University of Arizona and Donald Leitner have identified the actual cause is a huge step forward. Leitner says the disease is caused by a very specific strain of Vibrio bacteria, which is not that uncommon, but the strain can be uh, searched for and identified to determine if shrimp uh, have it or not. Uh, within this bacteria, uh, the bacteria is subject to an infection by a phage, which then produces a toxin that destroys the uh, digestive system of the shrimp. Uh, the action of this uh, toxin is very similar uh, to the human disease of cholera, where it is a, a uh, infection of bacteria producing a toxin that produces the uh, devastating results. So now the next step, obviously, is to develop tests that will identify whether a shrimp from hatcheries or ponds uh, have the bacteria and, and potentially the toxin. And this is the first step to isolating the infected uh, ponds and infected areas and controlling movement of live shrimp. And once these controls are in place, then it's going to be possible to uh, fully stock ponds and raise shrimp in ways with normal density, uh, safe in the knowledge that they are not susceptible to EMS. Therefore, uh, the resolution of this problem in shrimp farming could not be more important. Uh, it's going to take time for the disruptions in the global marketplace to recede, but the fact that there is now a scientific cause and an understanding of this disease means that the issue is no longer unknown and it's going to move more to a mitigation phase. Uh, in Lexington, Mass., this is John Sackton. Today's SeafoodNews.com video was brought to you by the Alaska Seafood Marketing Institute. Alaska has been protecting wild and sustainable seafood for generations and adheres to the most recognized and internationally accepted set of guidelines written by the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization. For recipes and additional information, visit WildAlaskaFlavor.com.